Hello everyone and welcome to the lesson. Today we are going on working with letters and we are going to discuss the problem of multicultural society. So let's start breaking. So we are speaking about the rules of writing informal letters. We are revising some rules of describing people and breaking with linking words. We are also speaking about some techniques which help us make our writing brighter. So, we are starting working with letters. So, as I promised, we are looking at some linking words and phrases. What can we join some ideas with? To add some information, we use also and both and moreover as well as. Итак, когда мы делаем описание, чтобы добавить какую-то информацию, какую-то деталь, мы пользуемся словами also, также, and, и, both and, парный союз, и, и, moreover, более того, as well as, также как. Sometimes we want to contrast something to show the difference between uh, some characters. Then we use but. On the other hand, however, nevertheless, in spite of this, although, etc. But. No. On the other hand, с другой стороны, however, однако, nevertheless, тем не менее, In spite of this, несмотря на это, although, хотя. Please remember these words. If necessary, put them down. Слова нужно выучить. Если есть необходимость, записываем и проучиваем. Now, working with some sentences, you can join using linking words. She's outgoing. Occasionally she can be moody. Join these two sentences. Outgoing and moody mean quite different qualities. So we are contrasting something. She's outgoing. However, occasionally she can be moody. He is trustworthy. He is reliable. Trustworthy and reliable are close in meaning. He is trustworthy. Besides, he is reliable. She is sensitive. She tends to get upset easily. Sensitive and gets upset easily. Close in meaning. She is sensitive and she tends to get upset easily. She is helpful. She tends to be immature at times. Helpful and immature are quite different qualities. They are opposite qualities. That's why we are going to contrast them. She is helpful. Nevertheless, she tends to be immature at times. He is intelligent. He is sensible. These two words have very close meaning. He is intelligent. Moreover, he is sensible. He is down to earth. He can sometimes be stubborn. Down to earth and stubborn are not the most positive qualities, but they are very close in meaning. So, he is down to earth. 
and he can sometimes be stubborn. Of course, you can use different linking words. It depends upon you. Now, working further. Sometimes we want to make our writing brighter. To do this, we must use more adjectives to characterize somebody. We must uh, use descriptions of some qualities instead of naming them. For example, uh, we can say, he's clever. It's clear. But if we say, nobody can get such a bright idea as he does. His ideas are always extraordinary and interesting. So, we described him as a clever person, but we didn't name the quality, we described it. Look at the words you can use and learn them. То, что вы сейчас прочитаете, обязательно нужно выучить. When describing person, we can use our senses. Описывая человека, мы можем использовать свои чувства. Sight. Зрение. Instead of saying, she's untidy. Она грязнуля. You can say, as you enter her room, you see her things lying everywhere. Her clothes is on the bed, her books on the carpet, and all of her CDs on her desk. We didn't name her untidy or messy. Мы напрямую не сказали, что она грязнуля или неряха. Но мы описали ситуацию так, что стало понятно, насколько человек не собран. Sound. Звук. You can say, she is always talking. You can say. But to make your writing more interesting, you can say, you can always hear her chattering away. It's difficult to get a word in when you are with her. Smell. Uncle Harry had a great garden with lots of roses. It is clear that the garden was beautiful, that there were roses, and probably they smell somehow. You can say, the scent of hundreds of roses filled the air of Uncle Harry's garden. Taste. She was an excellent cook. It is clear that she cooked well, that her dishes were tasty, and people liked them. You could tell she was an excellent good cook from the first bite of her delicious crunchy biscuits. Touch. You can say she had nice skin, but to make your Writing more interesting, we write, her skin was smooth and silky like a newborn baby's. Of course, it is difficult to describe something like that. You must have good imagination. But when somebody reads your writing, the impression is higher. Можно дать простыми фразами описание? Но если вы показали, что вы умеете, не называя черту характера, дать характеристику, это вашу письменную работу сразу поднимает в глазах проверяющего. Чем больше вы используете оборотов и непривычной лексики, тем выше ваш балл. Now let's try to change the sentences. Anna had a quiet voice. Speak in soft, gentle voice, sometimes hardly hear her. Вот вам идея. У Анны был тихий голос. Вы должны развернуть, что она говорила тихим, спокойным голосом, и порой ее было даже очень трудно услышать. Анна spoke in such a soft, gentle voice, that sometimes you could hardly hear her. Now you are working with your book, Page 20, exercise 8b, you are changing the sentences into description. Stop the video and do the task.
Well, let's have a look. Dave likes to be smart. I would say, Dave is always clean-shaven and he is dressed in a suit with a tie. His hair is always neatly combed. She wore nice perfume. Always smell beautiful like sweet, fresh summer flowers. She always smelled be beautiful, like a sweet, and you could feel the scent of fresh summer flowers. Sam is always happy. Have white smile, make skin wrinkle around eyes. Sam is such a positive person that I can hardly imagine him without his white smile. And when he smiles, it makes his skin wrinkle around eyes, which makes he, which make his face kinder. I like my mom's hair. I love running fingers through my mom's soft, silky hair. She's a very loving person. She is the person who always touches on arm and who can always hug me if I really need it. Angie is an excellent dancer. If you see Angie in the hall, she can see that she is more expertly to rhythm. She glides across the floor as if she was uh, weightless while she is dancing. So, you, of course, you can write different sentences, you can use different expressions, but still try to be interesting to the reader. Well, uh, the second part of our lesson, we're speaking about multicultural society. You have got some pie diagrams. We're speaking about British population. Britain's population, sorry. 92% of British population make British. But 8% are ethnic minorities. Ethnicheski minshinstva. What nationalities? Do these ethnic minorities include? 50% of this part of population make Asian, like Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, so people from those countries. 25% from these ethnic minorities are black, Caribbean or African people. 15% from them are mixed race. 5% of Chinese people. And as for all the other nationalities of the world, there are only 5% among all ethnic minorities. What conclusion can we draw? Actually, the majority of British Britain population make British people. Probably, people from ethnic minorities have some prob problems and troubles while living in Great Britain. There are surely some problems British government has to solve. Let's have a look what people speak about different nationalities, different people in one country. Listening and reading. Exercise 4, page 21. 
Exercise 4, page 21. <laughs> Multicultural Britain. My grandparents first came to Britain from India in 1962 to work in a factory, so I'm third generation British Indian. I speak Gujarati with my family and enjoy going to huge Indian weddings at the community centre or taking part in Hindu festival celebrations, such as Diwali. But I have a lot of friends and interests outside the community too. I've heard recently that more than a third of people living in my city, Leicester, today are migrants or second or third generation migrants. So it's set to be the first city in the UK where ethnic minority groups will make up the majority. Rupa, 16. When people ask me where I'm from, I say I'm British, even though I'm of Chinese origin. I used to live in a small town and I got picked on a bit because I looked different. But now I live in Newham, in East London, which is the most culturally diverse place in the United Kingdom. At school, half of the pupils speak English as a second language. Our next-door neighbours are from Poland. They came to Britain with their 15-year-old boy just after Poland became part of the EU. Lee, 17. My parents are from Jamaica but they have been living in England since they were young. I was born and brought up in Birmingham, England. When the first Caribbeans were invited to come to Britain for work in the late 1940s, there was quite a lot of racism, and it was hard for Caribbeans to find well-paid work. Nowadays, the Caribbean community is one of the most integrated in Britain. Racism isn't unheard of, of course, but you only have to see how many mixed-race marriages there are now and how many second- and third-generation Caribbeans are household names on TV to understand how much things have changed. Jerome, 18. Well, you looked through the text, you listened to it, now you are ready to uh, answer the questions. Who? Rupa, Jerome or Lee says their community experiences less racism now. Who has experienced racism? Who doesn't speak English at home? Who says their community has fit as well in, fit in well in Britain? Who likes to join in with community events? So you stop the video and choose the names using the text. Well, checking. Who says their community experiences less racism now? It is Jerome. Who has experienced racism? It is Lee. Who doesn't speak English at home? It is Rupa. Who says their community has fit in well in Britain? It is Jerome. And who likes to join in with community events? It is Rupa. I hope you managed with the task without any problems. Now, you look through the text again and you try to explain the words in bold in English. If you have problems with explaining the words, then just translate them. It is your oral work, and you can do it without writing anything. 
Ваша задача попробовать объяснить слова на английском. Если вы затрудняетесь объяснить их на английском, хотя бы найдите в словаре перевод выделенных слов и обязательно их выучите. Писать здесь ничего не нужно, но устно проработать обязательно. And now we came to your homework. You are to revise how to write letters. And write. Exercise 9a, page 20. You are to read the rubric carefully and write what you are demanded to. Внимательно читайте задание. Что вам требуется написать? Какого типа Письменную работу вам нужно выполнить. Будьте очень внимательны с комментариями. And you are to reread the text. We looked at at the lesson. Choose one person and make some questions to interview him or her about their life in Great Britain. Итак, вы возвращаетесь к тексту, с которым мы работали на уроке. Выбираете одного героя. Их было трое – Джером, Рупа и Ли. И придумываете вопросы, которые бы вы задали этим людям, если бы брали у них интервью об их жизни в Великобритании. It is your written task. So you have two written exercises. And I think it is enough for today. Goodbye, people!